Hello class, you are welcome to today's class. I will be taking you on the topic metabolism in the human body. My name is Ibrahim Nasim. So at the end of this class, you should be able to define metabolism, differentiate between catabolism and anabolism, mention the classes of food that can be converted and stored in the body, Lastly, you should be able to mention some problems that are associated with food storage in the body. So here we go, the introduction. What is metabolism? Metabolism is defined as the series of chemical reactions in the body which allow organisms to grow and reproduce, maintain their structure and respond to their environment. And we have or metabolism is classified into two. We say number one is catabolism and number two is anabolism. Now, what is catabolism? Catabolism simply means the breakdown of larger molecules to obtain energy. And anabolism is just the opposite of catabolism which is the synthesis of all compounds to all compounds needed by the body or needed by the cell. And metabolism is closely linked to nutrition and availability of nutrients. So here we go. Digestion of food. The food we take into our mouth cannot be used by the body just as we have eaten it like that. Our body needs to break it down into particles that it can use to build what it wants to build. So what is digestion? It simply is the process by which complex food materials are broken down into smaller particles with the help of enzymes and juice produced by specialized cells and glands so that the body can absorb them. And we say digestion starts from the mouth. So, these are the processes of digestion. We are going to look at the digestive system in brief, which is also known as the alimentary canal. And this alimentary canal is divided into five parts namely the mouth, the gullet, which is also called the esophagus. We have the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. And the digestive system also consists of the gallbladder, the pancreas, the salivary gland. All these are part of the digestive system because they aid in digestion. Now, digestion process. Digestion process starts with injection, where you take in the food through the mouth, down to the esophagus, down to the stomach, to the small intestine, to the large intestine. Now in the mouth, we have an enzyme which converts starch to maltose, it's called thialine. And in the same mouth, we also have the hydrochloric acid, HCl, which neutralizes the alkaline in food. Down in the stomach, we have the gastric juice, the renamed coagulate milk protein, and the pepsin convert protein to polypeptides. Now, the small intestine is also divided into three parts. We have the duodenum, jejunum, and the ileum. So, absorption of food in the body. What is absorption? Absorption is the process whereby digested food particles diffuse into the bloodstream, which circulate them to where they are required for metabolic activities. Now, this is what we are saying. When food is digested by the digestive system, it is being ab absorbed into the circulatory system, which transports it to the cells where it can be assimilated. We know we have the villus which contains the lactel, which transport fatty acid and glycerol. We have the blood vessels, which transport digested proteins and carbohydrates 
through the blood capillaries as we can see from the diagram and the end product of digestion are mainly glucose, fatty acid, glycerol and amino acids. So forms in which excess food are stored in our body. Among the six classes of food we have, only two can be converted and be stored in the body. The rest, once they are in excess, they are taken out of the body. So these two classes of foods are carbohydrates, which are converted to glucose, which is converted to glycogen by insulin and stored in the liver. And we have fat and oil, which are called lipids. These are digested into cholesterol and fatty acids, which can be stored underneath the skin, around the abdomen, the thigh, and muscles. Now, we look at the problems associated with food storage. Excess glucose with lack of insulin leads to diabetes. Okay, now, this is what you are saying. You know, when you have excess of glucose in the bloodstream, and you lack insulin that can now convert it to glycogen. The result is diabetes. Diabetes simply means there is an essence of glucose in the blood. When you take the blood sample and then carry out a, a test, you find out that the glucose level in the blood is higher than normal. The person is said to be diabetic. Now, secondly, we have excess protein with malfunctioning liver leads to hepatitis. We know that protein cannot be stored in the body. So what happens when we have excess protein? The liver converts it to urea, which can easily be excreted out of our system. So when there is a malfunctioning of the liver, we have excess protein in the bloodstream and this leads to hepatitis. Then the last one is the excess fat accumulation in the skin, which leads to obesity and heart diseases. This is the end of the class, but before we go, we take the summary. So, what is metabolism? Metabolism is just the sum total of the processes of catabolism and anabolism, as simple as that. Digestion starts from the mouth 